Okay, so for chapter five, uh, we're going to start by talking about the behavior of gases. And the first place we want to start with that is with pressure. So uh, you want to remember from your initial discussions of uh, gases that the, in the gaseous state, uh, you have no distinct shape and no volume. So it'll fill any container you put it in. And this is essentially because uh, gas particles are very far apart from one another. There's a lot of empty space. So uh, you can compress gases. You can't compress liquids or solids because those particles are generally in contact with one another. Uh, all gases will mix completely with other gases that you put in the same space. Again, space between the particles. They can get in there. Okay, And because gas particles are moving, uh, they have kinetic energy. And because they have kinetic energy, when they hit other particles or other surfaces, they will transfer that energy uh, to those surfaces. And so that's what pressure is. And we measure pressure using something called a barometer. This is a simple barometer. Um, and essentially it consists of an evacuated tube. There's nothing in that glass tube uh, stuck upside down into a pool of mercury. And the pool of mercury is open to the atmosphere and the atmosphere pushes down on it and the mercury is forced up into the tube um, because of that pressure. There's nothing in the tube to push back, so it goes right up. Okay? It was invented by an Italian physicist named Torricelli in 1643. He was the first to figure this out. And uh, very useful. The important things about uh, the barometer is that if you do this correctly with the best vacuum we can make, the atmosphere will push this column of mercury up into a tube to a height of 760 millimeters. So, you know, three quarters of a meter at sea level under normal conditions. And so that was defined as a standard atmospheric pressure, 760 millimeters of mercury. So when you see the unit mmHg, millimeters of mercury, what we're talking about is how high the mercury column would be. Mercury being very dense and very heavy, um, that it's a good substance to use because 760 millimeters is almost a full meter. Imagine if you use something as, as light as water. The, the tube you would need would be several stories high because the atmosphere is very powerful pushing that up. The other important thing to remember is that there has to be a vacuum in the tube. In other words, there can be nothing there. That's what a vacuum is, is nothing, no, no matter. Because if there's any gas in the tube, that gas will also exert a pressure and it will push back on the mercury and the mercury won't go very high at all. And as a matter of fact, if the tube has just got atmospheric pressure in there, the mercury won't move. Okay, So atmospheric pressure is essentially uh, the Earth's gravity pulling this mass of air around us. That's, that's why the air doesn't escape into space, is because air has masses, the Earth has mass, and so there's gravitational pull between them. Uh, the higher you go, the less air there is because it's all down here at sea level. And weather conditions, the spinning of the Earth, the Coriolis effect, and all those things affect uh, where the air is. Wind is just air moving from one place where there's lots of it to where there's not a lot of it. That's all wind is. And if you're interested in that stuff, take Earth science. Um, because they go into that stuff. Okay, So uh, if you want to measure atmospheric pressure, you use a barometer. If you want to measure the gas uh, pressure of a gas in a container, you use a manometer. And essentially a manom manometer um, is, is open to the atmosphere, but it measures not the pressure of the atmosphere. It measures the pressure of gas inside a container. And I'll show you a picture of this. But basically, uh, if the gas has less pressure than the atmosphere, the mercury moves towards the chamber. The atmosphere pushes the mercury towards the chamber and, if, and vice versa. Okay, um, So this is what it looks like. This is a manometer in two different situations. It's called an open tube manometer because the tube on the right hand side of the, of the U-shaped tube is open to the atmosphere. You've got mercury inside and you have a gas on the left over here. And if the gas is less than atmospheric pressure, then the atmosphere will push that mercury towards that container a little bit more. And you can measure the difference in height between the mercury on the left and the mercury on the right. That difference Okay, that, that H difference, you subtract from atmospheric pressure and, and you'll get the pressure of the gas in the tube. Likewise over here, if the gas is, has greater pressure than the atmosphere, it will push the mercury more than the atmosphere will. And so the difference in height then is added to the atmospheric pressure because that's the pressure of the gas. It's more than atmospheric pressure. Uh, common manometer that you may be familiar with, although you may not even realize it was a manometer, is something called a sphygmomanometer. 
which is what they use to take your blood pressure. And the old-fashioned ones used mercury. Now they use an aneroid membrane um, that responds to pressure. Units of pressure. Most commonly uh, used is millimeters of mercury, since manometers and bar barometers are calibrated to millimeters to measure the distance that uh, mercury goes. So millimeters of mercury is most common. But in science, we usually use the word tor, T-O-R-R, -R, which is the same as millimeters of mercury in honor of Torricelli, who created the barometer. Uh, standard atmosphere is also used very extensively in uh, American sciences. It's abbreviated ATM. It's an arbitrary unit initially. It was uh, one ATM, one atmosphere, is defined as um, the, the pressure of the atmosphere at sea level. And then we also have the SI unit, which is the Pascal. Um, and a Pascal, since uh, SI unit is based on physics, uh, pressure is, is based on force per unit area. So force is measured in newtons, in unit area is measured in square meters, and so a newton per meter squared, one newton per meter squared is a Pascal. Uh, that's what pressure is, force per unit area. So uh, we have some conversions you should be familiar with. We have one atmosphere, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 torr, which is equivalent to 101,325 Pascals, or more commonly we say 101.325, or just 101.3. Uh, kilopascals. All of those are equivalent measurements and so we can use them to make conversions. So here's an example. Uh, we have a pressure of a gas measured as 49 torr. So go ahead and, and calculate the different uh, units. So figure out what it is. What is 49 torr in atmospheres, pascals, and millimeters of mercury. So go ahead and stop the video and come back. Okay? Well, let's take a look. 49 torr the conversion factor is 1 atmosphere is 760 torr, so that's 0 0.064 atmospheres. 49 torr, the conversion factor to pascals is 101.325 pascals per 760 torr, so that's 6,500 pascals. And 49 torr is equal to 49 millimeters of mercury, because torr and millimeters of mercury are the same.